Hey, we've got a uh, white gooder here on the floor today. We're going to have a look at, see if we can fix this thing. We're working on the floor because up here on the bench, uh, it's kind of occupied by some Tektronix gear as usual and a pile of um, assorted crap. So, yeah, my bench is a little bit too shallow to be working on something this big. And, uh, yeah, I want to get in the side there and it's going to be easy just to sit on the floor and have a look at this thing. This actually belongs to a friend of mine. He had a quick look at it and um, passed on to me to see if I can uh, get the thing working. Uh, it's uh, it's a microwave, of course, uh, and it's not microwaving. It's got two functions. There's uh, this lever here and this uh, beautiful late 80s, early 90s decor. Uh, if you slide this down to the bottom, it becomes an oven, like a, uh, a standard electric oven. Uh, and at the top there, it's got different functions for the uh, microwave section. Uh, Japanese, of course, as you can see by the writing. Denshi Rangey, which is an uh, electric range, electric oven. And um, yeah, you've got the standard kind of dial there for your power and the dial there for your um, setting your time. All uh, mechanical with a nice bell. And this is a mechanical switch, which is actually pretty cool. So if you have a look inside, you can see in the back there. Oh, if that's going to show up. You can see that element there. Now, if I move this lever down, have a look what happens. Look at that. How cool is that? That's all like mechanical kind of clockwork inside doing that. So if you've got your, your, your pie there or your cheesy toast or whatever, and it's coming out a bit soggy, you can uh, lower that element down and crisp it up, you know, the top of your lasagna or whatever, and you get some like delicious food rather than some soggy mess. So that's one of the reasons why um, this needs to be fixed because you can't really get that sort of thing easily in a uh, in a modern uh, oven of course they sometimes have the element up the top underneath there but um not a fold down thing and it's just like it's just cool like the design and the simplicity of the use there's no fancy touch screens or menu systems or like buttons for this cook this and cook that and automatically all do that it's just power time go so uh we're going to get inside here and have a look see what's wrong uh in this side here that's where all the guts are the uh the interesting stuff and um, yeah, hopefully it's going to be something not too bad. Uh, I'm hoping it's not the Magnetron or the High Voltage Transformer, because if it's one of those two, in a unit this age, it's probably not going to be worth fixing because they're a little bit hard to get and a little bit expensive. But if it's a high voltage diode or the high voltage capacitor, those two are pretty cheap and pretty easy to replace. So hopefully it's going to be one of those. Um, and once we've if we get it uh, working and once we've got it all uh, fixed and uh, operational, we'll do a test and see how much power this thing's putting out. You could do that pretty easily with a cup of water and a thermometer. So uh, let's uh, take the lid off, have a look in the side here and see what we can find. So I'm about to take the lid off and normally there would be a schematic here. Often microwaves will have a schematic on the side or the back, but it's been rubbed off, been cleaned off. So I can't really see what the schematic is, but that's all right because most microwaves are pretty much the same. The basic circuit for a microwave oven is going to be the same thing. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to be altering anything. And um, so I don't need to really know that intrinsically. But if you need to trace out the circuit, often you'll find a schematic some way on or in the unit. Now, there is one other thing we have to worry about before we open this thing up, and that is high voltages. Uh, this is a disclaimer and uh, just a note to be careful. Uh, this is a mains appliance, so make sure it's unplugged before you open it. Never open it while it's plugged in. Don't work on it while it's plugged in. And also, remember there's that capacitor in there, so uh, make sure that's discharged. Now, I suggest you uh, unplug it and put some tape around the uh, the mains plug so you can't be plugged back in accidentally. And then um, maybe just leave it up to even overnight so it can discharge. There is a, uh, a resistor inside the capacitor which uh, discharges the capacitor, but if that's not working so well because the capacitor is faulty it may still hold a charge for quite a while so just uh yeah leave it overnight safest thing once you open it up first thing you want to do is get a decent uh tester and test the voltage across that capacitor and make sure it's it's at a safe level very low only a couple volts or so and that will make sure you don't zap yourself so um if you if you continue on it's under your own risk and uh, just be safe and make sure you don't do anything silly and here we are inside the unit now you can see this kind of lever across here to here. This is where the element is. The element's connected to this little section. And if I pull this lever here, watch what happens. So that's where it's tipping that element up and down. 
all just levers and gears and clockwork. And you got your uh, interlock switch here, so if you push it all the way up, it uh, turns it off and it's folded the element out of the way so it won't burn yourself. We've got a switch down here for the uh, the uh, start and stop button on the front. All oh, the usual safety interlocks, there's a bell for that uh, food's ready. There's our high voltage transformer, we'll give that a quick test. Uh, there's our magnetron just here, this box. We can uh, test that, we can make sure there's no shorts to the case. Uh, there's a high voltage diode. We can test that as well, make sure that's not shorted or open circuit. And the capacitor. So I'm hoping it's either this or this that's causing the problem. So when you turn this thing on, after a, a second or two, it makes a bit of a noise, brrr, kind of noise, and then it blows the fuse, this fuse just here. Uh, so that indicates it may be that or maybe that. And I'm hoping it's one of those two. So uh, let's give this, this thing a, a bit of a test. I'll get the multimeter out and uh, we'll see if there's anything obviously wrong. All right, so I've got the Fluke 1587 there, insulation multimeter. I use this every day as an electrician. It lets me test insulation resistance. So uh, we've got that connected to the chassis there and I can pump a thousand volts. It's going to be fine because the high voltage side of this is like 2,000, 3,000 volts. And uh, we're not testing across components. We're testing between the uh, conductors and then the chassis to make sure there's no nicks in the cables. So we're not actually putting voltage across anything here, like across any parts. So uh, we've got to be careful as well because if we try and test the high voltage side, that's you know, from this part of the transformer up to here and across the, the uh, capacitor, that's actually referenced to earth and that's by design. So in the transformer there's a little uh, wire that comes out and goes to the, uh, the chassis of the, uh, the transformer. So we can't really test that. If I try and test it, if I hit the button there on somewhere, you're going to say, yeah, short. It only can kick out two volts because it's yeah, dead short. But if I do it on the input side, which shouldn't have any connection to earth, 2.2 gig ohm. So let's uh, get this thing in a position to be uh, operational. And uh, we can just poke around a little bit. 2.2 on the switch there. Uh, on that switch down there. 2.2, yeah, it's looking all good. 2.2. Bring the, uh, the switch up to the uh, microwave mode. As if that's been turned on. 2.2, yeah, it's all looking good. How about that fan? Can we test the fan? Uh, if that's going to focus in there. Yep, there we go. What does that say? 2.2. Yeah, so there's no insulation resistance problems. So we can also test this uh, diode. So I'll get that disconnected and we'll disconnect. Uh, we'll test this as well. We can make sure that there's no uh, short to earth. So we'll have to disconnect these wires because that's going to um, remove that earth path that's down here by design. And then we can test between these two connections to earth. And then also just test the resistance between those connections and see what that's reading, if that's okay. Test a diode with a normal diode test. Might be able to do it with this uh, this tester, but that's actually a whole bunch of diodes in a series to bring the uh, voltage up, because that's like a 1,000 or 2,000 volt diode. Uh, we can test the uh, capacitor to make sure that's reading okay. And uh, basically we'll test this to make sure there's no open circuits and no short circuit. We've already tested no short circuit there, so... There's not much else we can test here without going more specialised, but see how we go. Okay, so we're on ohms mode, and we'll test the um, the filament here of the uh, magnetron. So what are we getting there? And that is 0.4 ohms. So that's alright, filament's good. And if we go to the uh, chassis, nothing, perfect, we're not short to the chassis. We don't have to test the other side because we already know that's got continuity through. So uh, let's have a look at this diode. So let's switch that over to diode mode and hook that one up to there and this one up to here. And nothing, that's open circuit. Fantastic. If we hook that one there and put that one on there, 4.5 volt drop. It's not going to go beep at me because that's too high for a normal diode, but like I said, it's a couple diodes in series. So it's not the normal like 0.8 volt or 1.2 volt or whatever it is for a normal diode. That's uh, looking good. Okay, so let's give the uh, capacitor a test. 
Let's see what it is in the ohms mode. Oh, one ohm. That's not good. That should be practically open circuit or you know, tens of mega ohms or so. Hmm, let's hit the uh, button and go to capacitance and see if that reads anything there. Nope, overload, out of range. No good. We might have a winner winner chicken dinner in this uh, failed capacitor. That might be the only problem. Fantastic. It looks like it's a 1.03 microfarad, so something around 0.9 to just over point, uh, 1 microfarad will be fine. So I might see if I can find a 1 microfarad. And uh, let's stick that in there and see what happens. That might be an easy fix. All right, new capacitor has arrived. You can see there the little diagram there. 10 mega ohm resistor in parallel with the capacitor. That's just a bleeder resistor to um, drop that. Is that going to focus consistently? Uh, just to, yeah, to drop the voltage out once it's um, disconnected so that you don't go and zap yourself with a couple thousand volts. This is rated 2,100 volts and is a 1 microfarad plus minus 3%. I'm not sure if that 3% is going to be <laughs> uh, true. It's a, a you know some no-name brand from China. But if it's close to 1 microfarad, it should be fine. No PCB. That doesn't mean there's no circuit board. That means no polychlorinated biphenols, which are um, basically liquid cancer. You find that in a lot of old can uh, capacitors and uh, in old uh, transformers and uh, high rupture capacity fuses for big voltage stuff. It's like a, anything from a clear to a brown liquid. Often it's straw coloured or clear. And yeah, it's, uh, it's bad news for, um, for cancer. It's fantastic for insulating properties. But if you don't want cancer... You don't want to be um, around that stuff. So make sure your capacitors say no PCB or no PCBs. So let's give this thing a test. There we go. And see what our capacitance is. If I can uh, get my probe in there while holding the camera. Oh yeah, 9.56 nanofarads. That's 956 nanofarads. That's 0.9 microfarad. 0.95 microfarad. So yeah, that's reading all right. A little bit lower, but often capacity these days, they're cost optimised to the point that they're often reading with intolerance, but, but like low tolerance, just because it's cheaper to put a little bit less foil and tape in than it is to uh, put a little bit more. But 95, 0.95 uh, microfarad, I will say that's fine. Happy with that? So let's go on, stick that in. Looks like there's one screw on the back to remove this strap. Slide it out. Slide the new one in. Alright, new capacitor is installed. Old one's ready to go in the bin. The um, connectors here were smaller, the little fast on kind of spade connectors. They're a smaller type here, whereas the old one were the, uh, the larger type. So I just had to put new connectors on there, which is no worries at all. Just crimp them on and uh, they fit perfectly. That's the same kind of size. This one, new one's a little bit shorter, but it's the same size around because it's like a stand, I guess it's a standard microwave size capacitor. So that's all in there, perfect, ready to go. So all we've got to do is put the lid on, power it on and see if it works. And I'll show you how to test what the actual power output of a microwave oven is. All right, so we're ready to give this thing a test. Got a uh, litre of water. So the, the way you test is that the easy shortcut way is you take the temperature rise of a litre of water that's been in the microwave for one minute and times that by 70. So the uh, temperature before minus or subtracted from the temperature afterwards one litre of water, which I've got here, one minute, times that uh, result by 70, and you've got your, your microwave power. Uh, so I've got my one litre of water, and it is at 25.2, 25.2 degrees. So remember that number, and we'll stick it in. Now, the reason why I haven't turned this thing on just to see if it works is that you should never turn a microwave on with an empty cavity. Uh, if you do that, you can actually, with a... Um, like the reflected waves and stuff in the resin because it's a resonant cavity it can feed back into the uh, magnetron and uh, blow your magnetron it can overheat and uh, melt the magnetron so you should always have at least like a cup of water or so in there so let's stick this in and we'll turn this on and see what happens all right so we've got it at uh, strong range they got the uh, medium range here that little character means medium and that's strong uh, there's a few like defrost and whatnot here, and then we've got the oven section. So we'll put that at the top, so it's on strong setting. 
and uh, we've got the temperature here, but that's for the oven. So we don't care about that. We're not using the oven. And uh, here's a timer. So I'm going to turn that up higher because I'm going to measure the time with my uh, with a stopwatch on my phone because I'm not sure if, how close that number there is to actually one minute. It might be a bit faster or a bit slower. So I'll leave it at um, up here and then I'll turn it off myself just like with the button or whatever when my timer says, my, my phone timer says one minute. So I'll hit the button and then uh, we'll turn it off at one minute and see what the temperature is. Looks like it's working pretty good. At least it's not blowing fuses. The real um, test will be is if it comes out with some hot water or if it doesn't. But so far so good. All right, let's see what we get. Grab that water out. And we'll grab our thermometer. Stick that in there. 32 degrees, 31.9. There we go. 31.7. 31. Oh, 31.8. Let's say 31.8. Looks pretty stable there. 31.8. All right, so calculation time. 31.8 was our temperature afterwards, minus the temperature before, which is 25.2. That equals 6.6. .6. Now, we times that by 70. 6.6 .6 times by 70 seems to be the magic number. That equals 462 watts. So about a 500 watt oven. And if you look on the side, now it says that the uh, the microwave is rated to a thousand watts, the uh, the microwave oven. But I think that's what it draws from the uh, mains. The actual high frequency, this says high frequency uh, output or whatever, 520 watts. So 520 watts, we're getting 462. I think that's not bad for a 30 odd year old uh, machine. So I think I might give that. A thumbs up we got it fixed fantastic hope you find that useful hope you're able to get your old microwave working again with some uh, of that information and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next one